is the company a good fit for me? And am I a good fit for the company? A private sector view. Again, is the company a good fit for me? And am I a good fit for the company? A private sector view. So as you're going around today, please talk about this video. Again, this is the part of the month. Then we get to the evaluation of general leadership on a single time. down to the simplest one. What is the green economy? Why should we care about the green economy? And why are green jobs and single jobs so important? Let's start. Um, so, I always want to look at it from uh, the policy maker, the government perspective, and um, try as much as possible to put it off in our house. For me, the discussion around Green economy uh, represents three things. One, conservation of our environment. Two, efficient use of our resources. And three, the whole agriculture, agriculture, and value chain. Well, the first one, conservation. I think if you look at the most money and the most and I think when we were in school, from our primary school to senior high school, every time you start talking about the money and the people like, oh, Ghana is the primary group. Stuff of really raw material, right? And we've been saying it over a long period. So you see our economy is so dependent on the primary sector, agriculture, and all these other processes. And if our economy is sick, it represents almost or contributes almost 60 to 50% of our GDP over a long period. And even when you look at the labor force, agriculture still works in the country to buy jobs for a lot of people, especially. In our own communities. And so, for me, if we are talking about the green economy, we are looking at the, and, and the opportunities that exist, especially in the agricultural side. Efficient use of resources. I, I think it will also be a very good combination. What I would try to do is just maybe personalize it and give some sort of uh, representation that we have all connected. If we took our human body, Right. Okay. Yes. Say the economy that we are looking at the There are different parts of the body which tells us to go out there each and every single day to do things that help, help more growth and sustainability, right? Let's take it and okay. you realize that your body is running out of water when you are becoming dehydrated. There are three things that you want to consider. If there is water close to you, you will want to drink that water in the But if the water close to you is so small, that is not going to take you far. What you try to do is manage the little one that you have. So we spoke about conservation and preservation. If the human body was the economy and the world that we are looking at, we are coming to a stage where we are running out of certain resources which hold us together as a planet. Now we need to find a way of conserving those resources. There are other instances where we have to find a way of replacing some other resources because the ones we have are no longer helping us as a plant of the world. So if I wanted to just put this as a representation, that's basically what the green economy is. How do we facilitate sustainability? How do we pursue development without creating the, the resources that we have, without encouraging and promoting our resources? And ensuring that we are able to promote environmental sustainability. First of all, we have global goals, so we have a lot of issues that we want to get to the point where we are climate, environmental, and climate resources. We all get to what we do together, how our plans are missed, but we are put together. We have a lot of us, this is not the world, we are part of the world, we are struggling. When we plan to see what happens, we can go to this one's tower, we are living in that most of the events of the beach sites. When it rains, we want to see people who call the water and say it's raining and we can make it because we have a part of the pool of water. When you think about green economy, think about your role. The fact is, you today, it's your job, not a skin death, how you are being created. As a result, everything that's happening with climate change, with plastic pollution, with biodiversity, everything in relation to the environment, how it's possible to end your future. Because the sentence of us being an export. So you can understand that what you see that.
house to the place. Uh, living space from the end and being able to manage that kind of things and gain profits of it. Let's see how profits and changes all of this. So can you tell me about something about the job, about how it's secure, about how it's supposed to go to the environment of the agent to the job and how the planets are sustained over a period. That's what you can tell me about the job. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Um, so I think we need to see the virus because this virus is that growth is infinite. Like the economy has been growing and growing. Everybody wants to go there. But I mean, there's also recession. It's a part of the economy is not growing. So it's about seeing that we are not keeping business as usual. It's about seeing that businesses have to find ways to offset their carbon credit and to offset their carbon footprint. So, we have oil company, oil companies are limited in how many offset uh, or media manufacturing, how many sets and how many offset, um, how do we use solar energy, how do we use recycle how it's often, how do we use that whatever we can do, how many the differences, how many companies should share that time, how do we make it sustainable that every share that I take, I can have a tree from it, right? This is what is business of change. We want to keep part of those businesses, keeping the environment in mind and ensuring that the environment is, is high enough. At some point, we need to be interrelated. And so it's important that we really need to make sure it's similar uh, whilst we are trying to achieve those different targets. So that's what I have to say. So, we should be our way on the plants as a country. Yes. 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 What are the businesses, right? As and so for me, from what I said, the green sector presents a new frontier that if we are able to and develop sustainable good and that for jobs, good and for development, so good success. We are it is the Ministry of Labor and, and Ministry of Government and Labor Relations. I know that the Ministry has been leading the process of one market, the national employment policy, to transit policy, discuss a long term employment policy goals. If that the Ministry of Labor or this partners will we'll document green transition to green jobs. There is already a huge challenge in the employment rate. Forget about last year, what we had at all that. One of the key things that we are about the issue of skills. Whether young persons in the space have to play more skills, relevant skills, and, and that will help businesses grow. And I think for me, from the policy perspective, that is why I am central in that. Let's identify the opportunities in which the Ministry of Human looks at. Let's identify the skills. Let's break it and the whole place. I am lawyers for two and then academia and play government together around the table, possibly even and have a discussion around the table. How is it that we're still trying to bring people to the table to discuss what we're going to do to segue into green and job sustainability? Why? Why are we still lacking a bit behind? I and I know. I'm pushing on this part. We're in a global position. How do you think global conversation that we need to be part of? Uh, I mean, I say yes to the answer. Right? Yes, I work with governments. I am. I work at the UN villages. I am the other person that's a new person. And so, we need to talk about We are just very, we are very things. We very this discussion because that is why in my introduction I have the issue of efficient use of resources. So, alright, we're not here. We were talking about that. Ten years ago, we were talking about the time and all the other things. We were still working behind the time. We are catching up by what the young guests is trying to do. And then five So we are working behind. And then we can't sit back and see that we're going to And that is why what the 
ministry has had by providing the ministry to the strategy document. It's very good. All the players who have been picked. But what happens is that we say the ministries are often set up for this is where persons like my analyst and the skills work and the document is not exactly relevant to what they are so the lead to us get down the table to so show that not a relevant document, a relevant structure that matches all the participants in the ecosystem. So I have to be very that it can catch up. And I think discussions that we are having to do programs like this and some of the work of the government to go around with an increase is needed by the on why we need to take these safeguards to get the relevant answers around the table and bring about the very important looking strategy and policies that will take into account all the needs and opportunities of the EPS in the industry. So we can understand that very well. There's no problem. Just sit down. We have to do something. All right. That's why this discussion is very important. Thank you. Seven. Let's have to take a seat on this. That's the main policies in place. Actually, I said the national union strategy that we are using for the European Union by IMF. There are a few that various players have put in place. For instance, new plans, the CSOs, new plans, the numbers, and various aspects of the European Union. I say the various aspects of the European Union. We look at sector, we look at financial, we look at various institutions. We have smaller policy organizations to die on the money and to see those. And that process has been easy. It's like coming up any other thing. That regulates the situation. The place is now going for But our ability to catch up is slow that we are very Like everything else we do here, including the one of the first and foremost, we are talking about things, and we can see quality, the solution, and we are going to come to those together. Those are the conversations we are having. And people are part of those conversations. You know that. There's a growing trend that Japan is now starting a little bit oil loss and control. Why should we jump to the other end of the end? Because when the resources are developed, it's not that they're going to develop. We are contributing very slowly to climate change and all these things. Why are we going to talk about it? And that we are sitting on the other side of the day and I don't entirely disagree. Because those things are as important as, as, as in achieving the great transition in upscaling people such that we can take advantage of the opportunities, skills training is so important, right? Now, what are we doing as far as enabling people and empowering them with applicable skills and training? And from where you sit as a, an entrepreneur, a green entrepreneur, we can like hear from you on this because I'm sure. When it comes to recruitment, there are certain things you look for. What are you seeing in potential employees? What's lacking? What do you think can be done better to give people the skills that they need to take advantage of the opportunities that the green economy presents? And how can we plug the gaps that exist in skills training and education when it comes to our plans for greener jobs and green opportunities? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, first of all, what I would say is Africa, we already have this So we need indigenous knowledge, which we already have. I give an example. In the early 90s, so you have to find a white You look at the book with you, right? And then there was just a lot of dishes to be in the book, right? And then in the early 2000s, you know, plastic came in. And the purpose of plastic was to solve the problem of overlying all of these safety issues. Today, it's a hell of a disaster, which is so very to solve. But as a startup that just left in Ghana, uh, they just lost a huge funding, and we are just returning to that practice where we have a huge machine that washes the boats in water, and put their body for case, whatever it is, you bring the boats, then you do your food in that room, you bring it and you return it for your money back, right? It's interesting concept, but this is what has been existing with us for a very long time. Look, you build houses and you're building houses with block and mortar, good iron blocks, and do some of things in your sweat, right? 
But the house is not clear and pretentious of the West. It's not something that is designed for us. We were building houses to play a very nice place that could actually give us that kind of walls, right? And so we have to keep the way we build our communities. So we build houses in settler mode. And that's the community and everything. Now we build houses and people will buy the apartment, 80,000 dollars apartment, and our empathy gardens, and this one is a whole we are always the treated all that. But it's great. And I think it's important that we go back and find out what that space we need, and then come and make the following things and say we don't have any hard skills in the people, but we don't have traditional skills. The additional knowledge that we have, we let's go back and we can give people what we used to do and how best we can do it. Which is very nice to propose in the economy. It's also going to make sure that some jobs are lost in the form of gains in the economy. So, how do we ensure that the economy jobs are lost? They are going to get into the system. So, uh, that's what I just have to say. Uh, as, as entrepreneurs, we need to really think about how we uh, solve environmental problems, how we look at the entire value chain. For us, like how much source materials, for instance, how much source materials ethically. I mean, our plastic most of it is about plastic coming from the landfill. But at the landfill, sometimes there are young children there, they just want to charge to you. We have to move away from the landfill and make sure that the materials are coming from your households in a more sustainable way, right? But uh, then look at the end of it. How do you change it? Make sure that it's sustainable, how by using a hard work that we can us, for instance, we look at materials from Burkina Faso and we will set a track for Burkina Faso and the track will come up with the materials. That's quite a change. Then we see what if there are companies that look at materials from Burkina Faso. Remember, we have to have port, so it's mostly land transfer. Some companies look at huge amounts of materials from Burkina Faso. It's kind of confusing from saying that. So how can I go with those who are companies that go there and come back empty? Then put my load there, and I can do that without half the offset of my carbon for you know, utilizing. So we have to be really thinking about that and looking at what skills we need and how we can impact those skills and start going back to the choice of management. It's very important. Share factor. Look, share factor sources. Well, the only way to do the share factor share was in the north. And it's interesting that people are casting to have to share the countries now. And when you go to the new ways, I was, I was the new ways, and the new ways of the that I was using, it says share from Ghana. I'm like, all these companies are using share butter. And of course, it's Africa, and the is one of the biggest sponsors, but the share butter from Ghana is one of the finest qualities. And companies are sourcing from them. But we are cutting it down. Right? So, how do you say we want to be sourcing share butter? And say for every share that we source, we are cutting more share trees. It takes 15 years minimum, alright, to grow. But we need to know that we are planting trees whose shape we may never see and that and whose fruit we may never eat. But for the future generation, that's what we start thinking as entrepreneurs that whatever we do, some of the money. We're speaking today, well, we, we can agree that it's not all businesses that can be smart, that we need. The existing businesses that when we implicate some green aspects to them, they will fix the modern trends. So, when we have a policy, is there a point that really investigates the life cycle analysis of um, most of these companies around to really see their processes and see how they can implicate the green economy? Because I think they will also see as a lot. Or rather, just to give a new idea, if you have a physical one that you had a choice to make, for it to see the modern trends, it will go away to each other. But what body is in charge of that? I don't think that our, our transition into um, the green economy would necessarily mean that we have to scratch away some businesses. I am sure it's essentially a transition, trying to have all these businesses to sustainable practices. Right? So I, I think that, from, from, if I understood your point right, in terms of the first answer to your question, we don't necessarily need to scratch away some businesses. It is just to help them transition into some of these sustainable uh, practices that will help um, and the whole green economy, green global system. The second part, already there are a lot of, and, and I think that's one of the part that I can place in my is, is is the question of regulation. And so, once we transition into um, the green economy, one key part will obviously be regulating the, the businesses that we have. Already there are Quite a lot of regulatory bodies and 
my friend usually says that that is one of the countries with one of the finest laws sits in our books. But unfortunately, they are always in our books. And in terms of its implementation and enforcement, that's a problem. So regulation and environmental protection agency is there, the energy commission is there, and departments, uh, there's HEFRA, and I know there's a factory subjects, electric, all these bodies play a very good part. And I think that your question sort of summarizes everything that we've been talking about. That there's a need for us to get all the players in the ecosystem around the table and have a conversation on how we can play a relevant part in ensuring and peace is happening. Because businesses of business that will always be businessmen. At the end of the day, when they are sometimes used to the direction of maximizing their profit, sometimes they will be rather than choosing very good policies. Yes, they will choose sometimes based on their purpose, choose the path of making money. But that's what regulation and what is happening to come in and ensure that they are doing the right things. And, and, and so these are some of the bodies that I want to highlight. That's a contribution from So I will speak a few words on this subject. If you want businesses for a long time, if you want a business for a while, you know, at some point, you talk about the great economy, you have to evolve all the time. It needs a time that you're living in. You have to be able to meet the demands of the customer base. So, not sure, businesses will be going, but they will then make that to the forward. If you're looking for a single point that does help the business to a single point that they want, or that there's no one single point that can help them to the private sector. There are few people that have developed programs that are helping to assist people. For instance, SMB Green. SMB Green has created an accelerated program. I think it's one of my sisters, the Pilatinian, the Crab, also one talking keynote at the New Hub, the private sector players, to try to hold people's businesses, to bring an expert team, look at your value chain, and see where you have specific uses, where can you go, what is the carbon footprint, why are you emitting the most, why are you emitting the least. How can we benefit here? How can we benefit here? So you are able to enter into some of those incubators and accelerators that very likely will take the rest of us with funding to continue our connections with your respected family, help them see and build your customer data system, and able to help them suffer. But there's also the national, the national Green Job Strategy, and they have the national Green Job Program, and they need to be aware of some of our partners and players who play as well. But they don't necessarily interact directly with businesses, but you follow that trail, you realize that there's some private sector persons that are mentioning or implementing what they have now, and can be able to help you in your know, work as well. I think Grace also mentioned something about how we can also benefit from the economy personally. I think that before you, before you go beyond uh, trying to understand the economy, you need to understand what the economy is and how you can get. And where you can play your role. Because if you want to identify a problem and fix it, you must understand how to go about it. Because all the things I would recommend that from here, one of the steps you can take is to go to the USCC century for climate change for the third party companies. Pick that up, study that in the world, and leave. And from there, opportunities you have not seen, these were not very seen, such a way Because once you're conscious about the problem, you start to see solutions. Like I mentioned earlier, I am a young person first. So I totally agree with Ellen, right? I totally agree with Ellen and associate myself with the comment. And I think that that is why we are doing this partnership with GIZ is today. Because, I mean, let's go back 10 years ago, it would be very important for you to have this appointment here with this partner say, the GIZ is the department of law, this partner should make this happen. And so we have come to a realization that to be able to achieve the sort of goals that we need to achieve, it will need to be built on strategic partnerships. Strategic partnerships like working with GIs, working together with the other partner, and all other partners in the field. And it's not just the one man show. And over the years, these bodies will be working inside of trying to do this and we will not be making the sort of impact that we will be making. And so for us, we are partnering with GIs on understand that GIZ has been doing this for eight for quite a long time. Last year we attempted our job there, and has also been doing this with the uh, public employment centers also here and people need to sustain our work and whatnot. So this is what you see happening here and 
same partnership, that is not just going to end today. But it is going to be a way yet to ensure that one, we connect the young person to sustainable jobs, we provide the needed skills, and that will ensure that the young persons are contributing to the local authorities. And most importantly, also developing lives and making our community better. So, then I can assure you that we are taking the steps to ensure that this is not just a talk show. GIF has a record since the time they started their job fair. They are very good stories to tell. When we had our job fair last year, we were able to connect with our thousands of doors, and, 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 and it's a growing partnership. So, we have our better assurance from us. We will keep working to ensure that we connect the young persons to the opportunities. Collaboration is key. You want that short of that. It's very important. So, so please, you have to follow up with them. Uh, okay, but let's remind ourselves that we are. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think first of all, I'm not going to be able to get into the city, so we talk about the best problem. We need to go to So we are making a call out to them now to get a certificate. They are not key yet. Yeah. Yeah, I think you, you, you have a good point right now. But let's let's not always also put the responsibility just on event organizers and people who put together such useful concepts. They have good intentions. Just like the economy, all these things are involved with time. And yeah, conscious young person will always be my enjoy coming to a one way and just stop. We are having a practical experience to work on our work. I absolutely understand you. The other thing that I would also like to add is it will be great for such events to also be for the public out there. We can't put down some of the changes. The career session that we did yesterday, right? It was great for sharing and getting people to understand it. But maybe in the afternoon session for the next day, we can have people come, have a good fun session. Have the likes of friends, have the likes of other small businesses, maybe people that your outside. Share their own problems. Now you can just presentate from what you meant yesterday or what you meant all this work. Sit down and help us resolve this problem. Let's conceptualize the solution. Then we can be making more people you knowing that you are walking away with the still and not just talk, all right? That would be the best step. The second one is that when we have young people showing up, we can Identify and suffering alumni. How many people should have been saying that based on what they are playing, out themselves to do certain things? For example, yesterday, one lady who was in my session in Nigeria, after we spoke, she told me about her own business that she's doing on campus, the so called business. But between now and next year, how will you see this business be able to grow based on what she's doing here and what opportunity can we give her next year to also have a and a book for herself, for example, for herself, sharing the product and empowering other young people and herself to pick up skills to ensure for this event, right? I think those are some of the things we need to do. That's why I'm not doing We had Ms. Noah and Jimmy say from Just One. Share with us, we can even do two speeches that Just One is looking out for. And I believe if we have young people who can help them with those things, so we need to put in some money. Support them in this and all that. So, it will also be helpful in organizers and other stakeholders and partners. With a private sector company like Joshua, we can have someone dedicated to young, brilliant, exemplary people who show for this event that we can invest in them between now and next year to embark on practical solutions that they can even use as a company or other businesses or SMEs who use. So, we can you know, tell more realistic. What prevents us as a country from having one time these vaccines? I mean, I know you think it was this out of this, but what prevents us from having one time these vaccines? Banning plastics, one time use plastics, single use plastics. What prevents us from banning it? It causes so much havoc, so many problems, choking our brains, causing so many environmental problems, yet they still don't see the government to say we're banning these, these dangerous substances. Why? So, for instance, this is not simply used. When we say single use plastic, it means that it cannot be recycled. It's used once and that is it. 
a mesma coisa aqui no meio do ano, no Paulista, so all the speed will come from the complex. Our brain needs to view what's also in the house of the fish and so many things. Um, there are certain classes that I have in the opening that I mean let the knowledge to be power. So for instance, this um, plastic straw, very hard to recycle. Uh, uh, rats, there are certain rats that um, you buy from this week. You know, there's plastic and there's also some aluminium, so it's very hard to recycle. Um, uh, this goes out of cars, very hard to recycle. So, I mean, you go to the bar, why not? Some countries are taking an initiative. But it's why you know, I don't want to talk about the politics like the one you're going to do. But I think uh, that's all the political reasons I will go with my opinion. Thank you. What is it that was the economy? We eventually impose everything. And we are talking about job creation and sustainability. That we impose virtually seventy to eighty percent of things we use in this country. That's not my question. That's something. If after this program, I think you have access to a plan. Maybe in the thousands of people that set up the business. Somebody else will have set up the same business with the same amount of money. And my cost of operation at least that person is not operation. So how can we be able to compete with people from all ways? Thank you. Yes, it was us. And I'm sure the government will tell you that as of now we cannot afford to lose the duties that we're getting from airports. Uh, but then one will ask, yes, but at what point do we try to phase out imports in favor of locally produced items? So again, there's that element of balancing act. So while we reduce importing certain things, we increase the whole manufacturing of certain things such that imports reduce and manufacturing increases, you know. But somehow, in these years, we've still haven't been able to do that as effectively as we would want to. I mean, the government has come up with certain policies, uh, reducing import duties on certain raw materials of manufacturers to boost production, uh, increasing import duties on certain goods that can be produced locally. Whether or not that has worked to the extent that we want, well, that's debatable. But again, I think that. That's the sort of import, local production, it's still very nice. Could we do more? Absolutely. We could and should. Yeah! Today, the conference is really not open to me, so all of these questions are being fired in your direction. I totally agree with what you said. But then, as we're talking about, SS1 the constant. And one of those was always included by the human and so that. Right? And the reason I'm making this a very important point is that government has a very key part to play in the whole the fact that almost 80 to 70% of our consumables are really important. But I also believe that based on the whole question of demand and supply, also as a citizenry, we have a part to play. Let's take this assignment when we go into our homes or in our rooms. Let's take a pen and paper and list all the items we have. Right? Try and identify some of the items in our rooms. And you will realize that on the personal level, we are also contributing to much bigger problem. Because you realize that for almost every important item in the room, there's a Damian alternative. And let's just make a pledge that if we have given 30% of our population intentionally deciding to buy or fill the house with 60% or 70% of items made in Ghana, yes, policy will do this, but the more person would also try to solve the problem. So I agree with you, government has so much to do in dealing with the whole import and export question, but also as a we are the person who consume most of the items that are coming. And I believe that if we make a pledge 
that we are going to build our houses, our offices, our rooms, our cars with 70% items made. But I'm also helping the government in the long term. And then we have to do our best. That's what I'm going to also ensure we do. And I think that I totally agree with you. Let's also make that myself to continue in other items as well. Thank you very much. 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 I agree with you, but people who buy what is available is affordable. What's available is affordable. If you can't compete with the price, if you're a local manufacturer and you can't compete, if you can't compete with the price of imported products, people will probably realize the imported product is cheaper. Not because they necessarily prefer it, but because all other things are equal, it's just less of a burden on their pocket, right? So, first of all, people say, and I have a solo and you speak, you're not saying to your purchases. Be patriotic with your purchases. Like, go to the shop and say, I need products. All of these things, what we say, that's what I want. It's, it's a conscious, yes, a conscious decision and effort. But I would like to believe that most of the areas are like that. Most of the areas want to see the Indian product that is good quality, that they could patronize. But if it's not as available and not as affordable as a foreign alternative, you want to align it, especially in this day and age. They're going to go for the cheaper option. Exactly. And that's a point that I make also about others. Yeah. But the so I think I mentioned the part of the incentives as well. But it doesn't, on a personal level, it doesn't make so much sense to me that the other start we pay that huge amount of taxes. So it's a question that we need to have around the table and see how we give these start incentives to this startup. Because they are so far, not until I came to. And Saturday, they make money, and a lot of young people are making We are made for the young All that is needed is the right. And so I am very happy that at the end of the day, I've been involved with the Ghana Enterprise students for the match that they very specific focus on MSMEs. Not that to do any idea, is also trying to do so much. Now, very soon, we will start to also be launched to provide funding and support to young businesses. And it's very important, but then let's look at the broader conversation. How do we get startups or everything to compete with a these land organizations or land businesses who can be quite very responsible to a lot of the inputs that we have in the country? And, and I think that's where we come in, the government comes in, that there's a need for us to provide a better support for the needed pushing startups and MSMs to be able to store and scale them up to action. Because, like I said, the man from the eye, of course, the person is spending so much on the eye and product, it only makes sense that the person is certain price is also good. And we need to make this international decisions as well. So I like that. All right, so you have the business already. What's the first thing you do? Yes, sir. I think I'm going to do this. That one. Okay, okay. What? Fashion and so he thinks that this is more expensive. The good thing here is that that is an important economy. I mean, more than 80% of the whole is important. But maybe, for example, I export, so we export everything we have. We don't, we recycle and we export. And the shipping containers are charging $9,000. Now, when I request for a shipping container, I ship two containers every week. When I request for a shipping container, the shipping is going to offer me six hundred and one thousand dollars per container. All right. Some of the other ways we will show you because the ships are going to be empty with empty containers. Right? So there's so much things to do. We import so much that we are going to have so much empty containers as well. So maybe you should think about exporting your product. Think about it. Can you find a market? Join the Ghana Export Promotion Agency. In a cloud, register the market to collect it for us and export it. Maybe DHL, they put that out there, and it's a tough market for you. It's something you should really consider. The second thing about competition is 
Don't worry about the other fights. In as much as you want to skin and you want to get a great business and all of that, let them tell your story. Story will be very powerful. There are people that are selling skin to that that are super expensive. And yes, we buy it, right? For me, I've been mean, talking about the answer to what I don't care about the price. I know the product I just see from the box. I know where it's coming from, the story behind it. And when I buy it, or uh, when I fall, I love it. If I buy it, I fall around. I don't care about the expensive one. I just have to buy it. And then someone needs money. So of you is I'm watching the money. You cannot afford to be not watching the money. Or whatever you can find. You buy it. You buy it. The problem has been confused. You will buy it. So find the markets that will appreciate your product and the outside export. Find the way of export is very important. Before you go to our new shop from one of the music community in Canada, speaking with research professionals, Ghana, who are doing something on the adaptation, gender, and related things. So for researchers today, it's bold for us as a movement because if we're somebody to come up with a decision, Time someone to look for a job, for a this is clear. It's only time before the job you can go. Come for an interview tomorrow. What's the best reaction? Your ask is that he's right. Great. Yes, so we are working to ensure that we diversify that relationship. We have a wide part of the presentation we have in the morning. We are looking at not only jobs is asking, not only employers asking themselves whether they will get the right talent, but it's also the jobs having the confidence to be able to say that is this company also what good for me as a person in terms of my career objectives and my career goal. And that is what we are generally also seeking to achieve. Secondly, we are also trying to, like I said, reach it up to ensure that there's constant interaction between jobs is and employees. Often, as a person, we keep, uh, we keep hearing from employers that we don't have the skills, we don't have the skills, we don't have the skills. The employers to also make the investments in getting closer to us and letting us know what the skills they need, uh, they need and the sort of attitudes that we, we, we need to have as jobs. And I think that this program does exactly that for us. So let's start the war. So let's start in Sunani. Let's start in Yaya Let's start in Venus. Let's start slowly building from the very basis. And once we are able to solve that, and all of that comes together, that is the only way that gets to develop. So it's not every time that why you will have to sit in a car, Viva Department have to sit in a car, Jack have to sit in a car. It is about time we start moving out and building our communities. And jobs yes, your participation and attitude here today has given us the confidence to keep organizing these programs each and every year. So let's try to give ourselves a very good you can hear me thank you and say thank you and bye-bye to everyone in the crowd as we wrap up here. Hi, my name is Chilelia. Yeah, it's about natural spices. Mixed master spices. And it is purely 100% natural. There is no preservatives. There is no additives. It's naturally pure. And and the the ingredients there alone is superb. It is heavy, uh, heavy smell, and also it's also nutritious. In fact, it contains all the vitamins, all the nutrition vitamins a human being need. This one, I think, is even far better than the preservatives, the maggi, and all those stuff. Yeah, because it's also heavy now. When you take it, it helps regulate the body system, it reduces blood pressure and other stuff. So I think it's very good for the body. It's 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 perfectly well, and then 
at least our product is exhibited and then a lot of people have seen and then they've testified how good it is yes it's very well the program is also very good and i'll urge my colleagues out there who have dreams and then have these products and then who have talent and want to exhibit they should come out and and I, and I think this program is also very good for them when they come out at least they'll get people to talk to and how to start their own business and all those stuff it's perfect and I love the program okay my name is Makati Rafa uh, actually we are into photography and videography we also do designs as well well so far so good I think uh, it has been <laughs> One of the best since today is my first day, I think like one of the best. Photography business is uh, one of the best when it comes to creativity industry or when it comes to creativity, it's one of the best. Um, though it comes with a lot of challenges, but you just have to adjust yourself to it. That's the only thing I can say about photography. Yeah. Hello everyone, my name is Louisa Atasa Ponchichi. I am a co-founder and an ambassador of L and L Hair Organic Treatment Palace. I'm actually an exhibitor here at the Ghana Job Fair 2022, the Green Edition, live at the Eastbet International Conference Centre. So far it's been an amazing experience. This has been a new edition ex exhibition experience I've had in a while and I'm grateful for such exposure. Very thank you to the organizers. Um, I really learned a lot because in as much as I was here exhibiting, I really had the opportunity to listen at what was going on and then the plenary, the questions they were asking, in fact the facilitators, everything was so good and we do sell hair products, organic hair products, everything is organic made and then made in Ghana goods as well. We are located in Sunyani, uh, Ghana, so you can purchase from us. You can contact us via 020028-5684 or 020028-5687. We do sell the hair oils. This is the herbal hair growth oil. It is used for hair growth. So for ladies who do have problems with their receding hairlines, our products are actually not gender biased. So men, women, children, everybody can use it despite your hair texture. We also have the hair permit. This um, basically makes the hair shine and softens the hair as well. We also have the Shemex Hair Food. Basically, it's a shea butter based product. It really helps to nourish the hair. We also have the Che Butter. So for ladies who do have light or thin hair, this is the best product for you. All directions for use are clearly indicated on the product. We also have the Hair and Scalp Pomade as well. And uh, finally, we have the Herbal Leaving Powder. You basically mix mix that with hot water let it sit for some time and then you can apply it on your hair so we also have services two services one is the hair plan we really give our clients a detailed regime as to what to do with your hair and finally we do have the consultancy space these are all virtual services we do help with our clients and so with your hair problem we are going to talk to you and give you the best fit for you thank you very much